understand Saturn and Scorpio, the best thing to do is to just start off by touching base and making sure that we understand Scorpio and Saturn before we try to put them together. So let's start with Scorpio. Scorpio, fundamentally, basically, it represents passion. If we unpack this word passion, <clears throat> it has two facets to it. The first is the sense of zeal or enthusiasm for something. And the other is the sense of meanness, more eye centrism, because passion means zeal for accomplishing things or zeal for getting things or experiencing things or doing things. So it's what I want. Because Scorpio represents passion, that means it represents zealousness, that means it's a very intense sign. It has a lot of strength to it. It's not mellow. It's not wishy-washy. It's forceful. And another way of saying intense is deep. Like when you're passionate about something, you get into it. You go deep into it. You get absorbed into it. So Scorpio has the nature of pulling things in very deep because of the intensity. So things which are deep are signified by Scorpio, and that is why it has to do with secrets, mysteries, hidden things. And another simple meaning of the word zeal is just lust, as in sexual passion. So Scorpio signifies that kind of sexuality and the charisma that comes with it. Now, about the meanness of passion, this is why Scorpio is very individualistic. It's very defiant. It is what it is, and it's not going to compromise to norms, so it's defiant and rebellious. That's the basic nature of Scorpio. If you understand that, you can understand what planets will act like in Scorpio, if you also understand the planet. So now let's have a look at the planet in question, which today is Saturn. Saturn basically represents negativity. Negativity basically means subtraction, the decrease of things which has, implies failing, right? It implies non-producing. This is why it is the planet of scarcity, having less. So it represents poverty and neediness. The way that we decrease things, we get rid of them. So it, Saturn signifies destruction, getting rid of things. Or if you can't outright get rid of it, then you can reduce it. So Saturn also on the same box, it represents reduction or the curbing of things. If we break this into two forks, we'll have destruction signify death, and we'll have restriction signify curbing or holding down or subordinating things. So Saturn is the planet that symbolizes death. That's why it symbolizes all the things that are connecting to death, such as illness, such as old age and decay. And this is why it has to do with longevity of things, and the duration of things, how long they last before they die. And this is why Saturn has a very long endurance to it, or duration to it, and it's tenacious. It keeps going to the end. And similarly, because it represents subordination, it represents the people who are subordinated, the people who are held down. So Saturn represents the workers, the exploited, the masses. There's also one other side to negativity. It's the sense of pessimism. Pessimism is the attitude that I need to... Something is bad. I'm sure something is bad about this, and I need to know what it is so I can decrease it, so I can get rid of it. So Saturn is a planet of pessimism. It's very skeptical. It's not trusting. This is why it's very critical or analytical or logical and scientific about things. And this is in turn why it's not very emotional. It's not very attached to things. It sees things the way it they are. It's very objective. It's detached. It's realistic. So now we know what Scorpio is about. We know what Saturn is about. We can have an easy time discussing what Saturn is like when it's in Scorpio. Well, let's do that now. The first thing to realize is that Saturn is the planet of dispassion, but Scorpio is a sign of passion. That's going to become a major issue when Saturn goes into Scorpio. 
So it indicates somebody that's got a complexity with this passion and, and passion. And I can describe it best in this phrase, scathing cold. There's a coldness because of dispassion, but there's also a, an odd sense of passion and a dispassionateness. So it's like a scathing coldness. One of the ramifications of it is that they'll have a difficult time being warm with people, being accepting, being affectionate, being um, mushy. And another side effect of this scathing cold thing is that they'll be able to really be scathingly cold. They can do things that you would not be able to do if you were sensitive or mushy or sympathetic. Another ramification of the passion-dispassion thing is that these people tend to be prone to depression. The reason is that passion is our motivator. And when we have a problem with passion, we'll often lose motivation or feel that nothing is worth it. And when you have no motivation to do anything, that's clinically depression. So that's one very important thing about Saturn and Scorpio. Here's another one. Saturn is the planet of the subordinated. But Scorpio is the sign of the defiant. So you get people who are very, very defiant, feeling constantly subordinated, wanting to break out of that subordination. And so therefore, they're not very eager to be cooperative. They don't trust cooperation. They want to break out of their boundaries. They are not compromising. They're not negotiating people. So that's two things about Saturn and Scorpio. And here's a third. The third thing is that Saturn is a very skeptical planet. And that goes well with Scorpio being a rebellious or non-trusting sign. And the effect that this has actually affects the intelligence because it's on this theme and center of how it pertains to logic and science. They're skeptical, they're analytical, and Scorpio is also skeptical. It's because it's rebellious. It's not accepting norms. So this works well together. And so Saturn and Scorpio indicates a person who's not easily tricked, and in that sense, they're intelligent. And another aspect of their intelligence is that they will be they will actually want something demonstrable or practical to prove what you say is true or not true. That is the basic theory about how Saturn works in Scorpio in a void. This will be one ingredient in a whole chart. It may be a main ingredient. It may be the least prominent ingredient. You have to bear that in mind when you look at different individuals who have Saturn and Scorpio. So let's do that. Let's look at a few well-known people who have Saturn and Scorpio. The first one that I have in my watch list is Malcolm X. That's a fantastic illustrator of Saturn and Scorpio. He's a huge match on two and three, especially, and even one, really. Very defiant, very, very defiant, uncompromising, non-negotiating very intelligent in that sense of not being tricked. So let's look at somebody else. Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe mostly is a huge match for the first issue. Prone to depression especially and then also difficulty with warm relationships. Um, why is it that she's got this thing come out with her with prone to depression? Always look to see what house Saturn is in Scorpio is in. In Marilyn Monroe's case, it's in the fourth house, which is the emotional house, and which affects your happiness or sadness. In Malcolm X's chart, it's in the eleventh house. And also consider the Lord. When Saturn is in Scorpio, it will always be the Lord of two and three houses away. So in, if Saturn is in Scorpio in the fourth house, then it's the Lord of the sixth and the seventh they have the sixth lord in the fourth house is also kind of negative emotions, prone to depression. And they have the seventh lord in the fourth house is also kind of heightening the 
effect on relationships. So that's why she's particularly a number a match for number one. But also she's very defiant. She did stuff that's not conventional or normal. And she's actually quite intelligent. Another person, Hugh Hefner. He's a, a very interesting case because his Saturn in Scorpio is in the third house. So that means that it's the fourth, fifth, sixth lord. So as you know about the houses, if you watched all my videos, three and six are very good for a tough planet like Saturn. So he has Saturn in Scorpio, but in the third house as the sixth lord, and the sixth lord is good in the third house as well. So it's really making him succeed. His defiance of norms. He's very, very intelligent. He's a journalist, and he, and he made it. A fairly intelligent magazine. But he's, it's all about this relationships that he's not really treating these intimate relationships in a very warm or intimate way, is he? And also he had his whole reason why he went that direction was because of difficult experiences in his marriage. Another person, Bill Gates, Saturn and Scorpio. But Bill Gates is in the fifth house, and that's why Bill Gates is primarily a match on number three, which is the intelligent thing about Saturn and Scorpio. Although he also matches two and one and how he's being an inventor and doing things that other people at the time hadn't done or would think are not doable but it's primarily three very intelligent another person steve jobs and again steve jobs like you hefner has it in the third house but not in a three six exchange so for steve jobs again it's working really well as the sixth lord in the third house a big match on three and two He's really was all into think different. He's pretty good on the relationships area of life, although he had great difficulty with biological family, adopted, etc., etc. Another person with Saturn in Scorpio is Lee Iacocca, maybe not as famous as everybody else, I think, but he's an auto tycoon, another very, very rich person. So, does Saturn in Scorpio make you rich? It's not really that Saturn in Scorpio makes you rich, but there's other things going on in these charts that are indicating wealth. And Saturn in Scorpio is playing along with those other things in the chart. Or just other things about the Saturn itself, like for Lee Iacocca, it's in the 8th house. That means that it's the 11th Lord and the 10th. So you're connecting financially relevant houses now. Then we have Oprah Winfrey. I would just come right out and say, actually, she's not really a match for any of this stuff. I mean, okay, intelligent. But let me just be use this as an opportunity. She's not really a typical Saturn and Scorpio person, and that can happen. You can have a person with Saturn and Scorpio that's not a typical Saturn and Scorpio person. Because, for example, in her chart, it's all about the Jupiter and Moon. Jupiter and Moon in her chart are enormously impactful, and Saturn and Scorpio is tucked away in the 12th house. And finally, LeBron James. He's got it in the 6th house. Okay, again, Saturn in the 6th house does really well, and it's going to affect sports. So it matches all these things, of course, because you have to be not easily tricked when you're dealing with playing basketball. Not easily bluffed. You have to be defiant, uncooperative, uncompromising. And he doesn't really have much problem with the first issue. That's because he's got the first lord in the seventh house, and he's got Venus in the ninth house, offsetting that first issue. So hopefully that is as interesting for you to hear as it was for me to prepare and deliver. Um, if you want to know my take on all of your planets in your signs and houses etc 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 you can get my um, complete guide to your birth chart or the birth chart overview which you can get at my website victicara.com so please go and at least check out that page and subscribe for more videos and like the video and let me know if you have any questions thank you very much